I now declare this opera house open, and may God bless all who sail in her. Hello, Public Relations. Oh, is that radio station Yes, it is. Public Relations here. Oh, really? Well, I suppose that's what I want to speak to. Yes. Yes. Well, look, you don't know me, but my name's Gladys... Look, madam, Cus I'm afraid I'm terribly busy at the moment. Perhaps someone else could help you. No, no, no. I had a long chat with your switch girl, and she told me you were the chappy I wanted. Most definitely. Oh, is that so? Yes. Well, what can I do for you? I was just coming to that. Yes. Yes. You see, I listen to your station all the time. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And especially I... to Eric. Look, I wouldn't miss him for the world. Oh, really? He doesn't say much, mind you, but there's a world of wisdom in his every sentence. Yes, I'm sure there is. Now, if you could just tell me what it was I watch you... him on the telly, too, just before I go out for the groceries. Every arvo, very informative for a television show. Mm. Educational, too. And those girls, aren't they lovely? Delightful. But that's not really why I called. No? No. Yeah. You'll never guess what happened to me this morning. You suffocated your husband. No? Eh? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, it was that funny. You laugh. Well, I won't promise anything. I missed Eric. Well, good heavens. Yes. Well, madam, I'm sure you've suffered a great misfortune. But I, I wouldn't call it a national disaster, so I don't really oh, but think that my department... you haven't heard the half of it yet. Oh, no. Oh. You see, I usually turn on the wireless half an hour before mm. Eric comes on, so that I'll be sure to hear him. Mm. I used to have it on all morning before they took off the cereals. Mm. I often wonder what happened to Portia. So do I, madam, but I'm afraid I have a great oh, deal yes, of work. Oh, yes, but I'm getting off the track, aren't I? Mm. I'm digesting, as they say in the classics. You'll never guess why I missed Eric this morning. No, I'm afraid I won't. Now, well, the mind, baker got... called. Half an hour early he was. And uh, I got to chatting with him. You know how it is with the yeah, baker and all. Yeah, Before know. I knew where it was, it was half past. No. Yeah. Just got back in time to hear him say this, I believe. Oh, my God. Well, I could have cut out my tongue I for wish you so had, long. madam. I was absolutely mortified. I rushed in next door to Mrs Purcell to see if she'd heard, but she hadn't. She's having a... Hard time with a back, you know. Yo, I, I'm sorry to hear that. A fine Madam. stamp of a woman she used to be. Then her eldest left home and she went all to pieces, just like that. One day, happy as Larry, the next yeah. she was a wreck. Mm. Just a wreck. Good the day it happened, she was washing his shirt. I went over to the fence for a bit of a chat yeah. and she mm. just, just bust out crying in the wash house. Oh, never. Went all to pieces after that. Bronchitis, varicose veins, the lot. Oh. Now her back, just like that. A human wreck. Madam, I am terribly Never busy. Never seen anything like it. Perhaps if you get to the point, madam. Oh, yes. Silly of me, often a tangent again. <clears throat> what I want to know is what it was what Eric said today. What it was? What Eric said. Is that all you wanted to know? Well, yes. It means a lot to some people, you know. And I know that Mrs Purcell just won't rest easy till I go over and tell her. She relies on me now that she's bedriddled, you know. Yeah, well, just a moment. I've got it here somewhere. Oh, well, don't take too long. It's nearly time for the midday it's matinee. Midday it's on at two o'clock now, you know. Mm. Oh, yes, here we are. This morning he spoke on racial prejudice and how we should try to make life happier for new Australians. Well, isn't that funny? Yes, well, yes it is. Now, will that be all? I really what must a get coincidence. Back to my... We just oh, had a whole dear. family of Dagos move in next door. You mean Italians? That's what I said. Well, isn't that funny? I was talking to Mrs Purcell only the other day. You know, Mrs Purcell on the other side. Oh, yes. And I, I said to her how we should try to assimilate our new Australian friends. Uh oh Even if they are Dagos. Italian. After all, there's just too much intolerance in the world today, and life is short, isn't it? Not short enough, madam. Well, I've tried my best with a whole bunch of them, but they're yes, a very antisocial lot. Mm. Mrs Purcell says she doesn't even know why I bother. And she's intimidated more than once that eye ties just aren't couth. Mm. You know, they don't even speak the lingo. And do you speak Italian? Oh, no, but I don't live in Italy. Unfortunately. But that's just what makes it so hard to assimilate. Just take an example. Oh, dear. Just the I... other day, oh. I was out in the backyard with a wash when the eye tie yes, missus comes out to sit in the sun. So I thought oh, I'd make it. the effort Put anyway. So I says, Good morning. Yackety, yackety, and she just yackety, nods yackety. back. She obviously didn't even understand the Queen's English, but I persevered. I says, how are you this morning? 
She just nods again. You know, I remember Mrs Purcell saying that foreigners New shouldn't Australians. come into the country unless they can speak the language. But I kept on. Relentlessly, I no thought doubt. I'd try to get through to her with signs. So I points up to the sky and I says, Rain! And did she run for cover? Well, no. So I says, Looks like rain! A couple of times. And she looks up to the sky to see what I'm pointing at. But it still doesn't seem to register, so I jumps up and down, pointing at the sky and saying, Rain! Rain! And what in heaven's name did she do? Oh, she just looks at me rather peculiar like and smiles and then runs inside. Haven't seen her since. So it just goes to show, doesn't it? Yes, I suppose that it's... That Eric may have the best intentions in all the world with his little gems of wisdom, but sometimes you just can't do anything about it, can you? No, I... No. Well, I... Have been carrying on, haven't I? Oh, I wouldn't say that, madam. I do hope no. I haven't kept you. No, 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 no. You haven't kept me. Well, tell Eric I never miss him, and I think he's just that sincere. I'm sure he'll be delighted to hear it. Yes. Yes. Yes, well, it's been nice chatting to you. Charming. Yes. In fact, you've been very courteous. I'd like to write a nice letter to your boss about you, and your lovely good manners and all. Well, thank you indeed. What is your name? Martinelli. Luigi Martinelli. Oh, Martin... How do you spell that? I'll just spell it the simple way. S-M-I-T-H. Oh, very well. Well, ta-ta for now. Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? Oh, uh, this is Vogue menswear, isn't it? Yes. But you're a... Uh, I mean, well, isn't there a mail shop assistant here? Oh, no, I'm sorry. They're all out to lunch. I'm all that's here. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, uh, actually, I wanted a pair of trousers, but I oh, think yes. I'd better come back. Oh, no, 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 no. The trousers are here. Can I help you? What do you want? What size are you? Well, I take four and a half. Yes, you would. Well, uh, here's a pair of four and a half. Yes, I think they should be... Probably just a bit short. We'll have to alter them a bit at the waist and the cuff. Yes. Now, would you like to step into the dressing room? Well, uh, I really think I could come back, you know. Oh, I'm... no, don't worry about it. I do it all the time. <laughs> well, here we are. Now then, I'll just, if you'd remove... My jacket, yes, <laughs> yes, I'll, yes. I'll... Thank you very much. Now I'll just measure My your... arm's caught, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let so me stupid. help you. Yes, thank now, you. Now, your waist. I'll just... Slip the tape measure round and see. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> well, you are ticklish, aren't you, sir? <laughs> yes, I see. Yes. yes, you wear your trousers quite low, don't you? Oh, yeah. yes, yes, I do. I think we'll measure <laughs> oh. your outside leg. Yes. yes. Yes, they are very long, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they are. Yes, I'm sure they'll have to be altered. I see. Now, your calf. Yes. My <sighs> word. <laughs> Now, uh, could I measure your inside leg? Oh, well, I, I, I'll hold the tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. Oh, my word. <laughs> Tell me, do, do you do this all the time? I mean, have you always worked in a men's wear store? Oh, no, no, no. Before this, I was in a dress shop. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Uh, what? Dress? To the left. Yes, well, there we are. I think you're just about done. Uh, Thank well, you. I can put my jacket on. Yes, yes, you can, but I think if you want these to fit perfectly, I suggest you come back for another fitting. Oh, really? When? Oh, in about five minutes. Nice to see the droughts breaking. Do you think we're in for a long wet, Bert? Yes, Pearl. I'd say we are. Yeah. Looks like it to me, too. Rain, rain, go away. Always one for a laugh. <laughs> yeah. Glad you had the foresight to get us up on the roof, Bert. Yeah, Pearl. It's coming up fast. Yeah. Looks like we've lost the lot. Think we'll be all right, though. 
pity about the sanitary arrangements, though, Pooh. Yeah, there she goes now. Nice as Dunny on the Darling Downs. A three-holer it was, too. On a good day. Merrily, merrily down the Murren Bidgey. Never mind. Could have been worse. Yeah. I told you we should have been irrigated. Yeah. You knew a thing or two, Bert. Any casualties? Only a few, Pearl. Anyone we know? Oh. Hilda, Granny, Emmy and Joe, Tom, Mrs. Van der Stur, Mr. Van, Juliana, Jerry, Nick MacArthur, Martha, Jim, Mabel, Elizabeth Rossingham, Colonel Rossingham, and Gwen Meredith. Oh, well, could have been worse. Yes, Pearl. Well, here we are. What do you suggest we do, Pearl, to pass the time? I don't know, Bert. Might be months till the water goes down. Could well be. Hey, there's Bessie. Grab her as she floats by. She's a good milker, that one. She's done for, Pearl. Yeah. Never mind. Could have been worse. Where are the books you salvaged, Pearl? Here they are, Bert. Would you like me to give you a bit of a read? Might pass the time, Pearl. Yeah. Here's one from a book of Australian poultry. I love a sunburned country. <laughs> Why do you look so beautiful in this blasted twilight, Samantha? Stop! Don't go on! I must! Can't you see you're driving me out of my mind? No, Charles, it's over. It was over years ago. You went around the world. To forget. To forget. But I didn't forget, Samantha. Neither did I. I love you, Samantha. I still love you. I always have and I always shall. Damn you. And I love you, Charles. How foolish we were to spoil it all. How terribly, terribly foolish. Do you remember this? It has always been here in my heart. All right, hold it there. Uh, what? Hold it. it. Look, this is supposed to be a love scene, right? Well, yes, it is. You love him, he loves you. We are quite aware of the situation. Well, I'm not. I don't really see what you're complaining. Down here, I'm getting nothing. No realism, nothing but antique work. Antique? Yeah, antique. If we've got to revive this museum piece of a play again, let's get up some guts. Guts? My dear fellow, I don't really think it's that sort of a play. Dear me, no. Well, let's make it that sort of a play. Look, Stanislavski must have American producers. What was that? He said, may we continue with our rehearsal? Okay, but feel it. Think, and he shall justify. Oh, really? Oh, humor him, darling. From the top. Why do you look so beautiful in this blasted twilight, Samantha? Stop, stop. Don't go on. I must. Stop, stop. Don't go on. I must. No, darling, that was him. Uh, what, darling? I can't find that on my no, script. down here. Oh, not again. Now, think. What was your motivation for saying that line? My motivation? Yeah, what is your motivation? My motivation is my salary check at the end of the week. But he classifies the twilight as blasted. Now why does he do that? Because it's in the script. But it's a powerful word. My dear fellow, my wife and I have been performing in this play for the last 28 years. And since this is the 10th revival in that time... 11th? I feel we ought to know how to play a relatively simple love scene. Oh, but it's not simple. Uh. No. What do you suppose these people are thinking as they say these lines? That they should be doing another play. At this Very moment good. in the play, Samantha's mind is completely typewriter. Good heavens. 
But honey, you're still thinking in terms of cup and saucer. Oh, now look here. Cup and saucer? Now get on with the scene. Can't you see you're driving me out of my mind? Better? No, Charles, it was over years ago. You went around the world. Why did he go around the world? To forget, damn you. But how do you know? Because it's my next line. Oh, sorry. To forget. But I didn't forget, Samantha. Neither did I. Now there, she says, neither did I. I know, I just said it. But where's the emotion? I'm doing my best to control it. But you mustn't. This is where the damn burst. Oh, you're so right. What emotional memory are you drawing on? I had radish for lunch and it's playing hell with my wind. Well, I suppose that'll do. But remember, we've got to give this scene something for the kids. I don't really think kids will want to see this play. Now, may we go on? Yeah, go on. Truth, truth, always truth. I love you, Samantha. I still love you. I always have and I always shall. Damn you. It needs more attack. More attack. Attack? Don't tempt me. And I love you, Charles. Your father in it. How foolish we were to spoil it all. Now think of bananas and Coca-Cola. How terribly, terribly banana. Good. How terribly what? Go on. Do you uh, remember this? Fine, fine. Will you shut up? It has always been shut up. In your heart. Now, while it's fresh from the top, think, feel, bring them to life. Why do you look so beautiful in this blasted twilight, Samantha? Stop! Don't go on! I must! Can't you see you're driving me out of my mind? No, Charles, it's over. It was over years ago. You went around the world... To forget! To forget? But I didn't forget, Samantha. Neither did I. I love you, Samantha. I still love you. I always have and I always shall. Damn you. Damn me? Yes, damn you. How dare you? Why, you miserable... You sick and daughter! Get out of my life! You go to hell! You hell from my solicitor! Damn you! Now we're getting somewhere. Well, hello. Fancy seeing you here. Hello. Uh, don't you remember me? I don't think or, I... Uh, surely you do. Uh, uh, about three years ago. Oh, yes, yes, of course. I'm <laughs> sorry. I should have known you straight away. Oh, no, away. no, not at all. You must forgive my bad manners for suddenly bowling up to you like that. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm just glad to see a familiar face. <laughs> Well, 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 what a surprise to see you here again. Yes, and for me to see you. Oh, not really. Actually, I come here quite often. Oh? Uh -huh. Yes. Well, you know how it is. One occasionally has to let off a little steam. So here you are. <laughs> yes. Well, my dear, you know, you haven't changed a bit. Flattering. No, no, I mean it, you haven't. Thank you. Are you and Bernard still... Oh, good heavens, no. We're divorced. Ages ago. Oh. Must be six weeks. No, oh, I am sorry. Oh, don't be, I'm not. He practically kept me on a leash. Something had to give. Yes, quite. <laughs> I imagine that's why I haven't seen you around for so long. Yes, that's right. But here I am, a free woman again. <laughs> yes, rather. The old place hasn't changed much. Well, this place? No, never does. I'm told they're pulling it down soon. No. Hmm? Soon every landmark in the city will be gone. Sad. But I suppose that's progress. Yes, I suppose it is. Yes. Uh, look, uh, would, would you think it terribly rude of me? I mean, you are a free woman. Uh, yes. Uh, would you have dinner with me? Oh, I'd be delighted. Marvellous, marvellous. I say, it's rather close in here. I've had quite enough to drink. Yes. Shall we uh, move on? For dinner? Very well. No, I still can't get over seeing you in here again. Well, old time's sake and all that. Oh, uh, here, let me. Oh, no, no. When you're finished. <laughs> there. So they're pulling the old place down. I shall miss it. Everything about it. The porcelain tiles, the quaint old sign that hangs over the entrance. Gentlemen. Oh, didn't you notice? On your way in, that's gone already. No. Mm. They've put up a new one. Just says men now, M-E-N, men. How cold and undignified. Unfeeling. But I suppose that's progress. Three. One. Oh. Nine, seven, one. Hello. 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 Lifeline on the line. Save a life in the nick of time. Hello. Now listen carefully, miss. I'm a desperate man. I have no reason to go on living. You're my Excuse last me. chance, do you hear? Excuse me. If this me. doesn't work, I'm, I'm going sorry, to throw sir, myself from the top of this building. Just one moment. Uh, could I have your name and your address? Uh, you don't understand, Miss... Miss Cunningham? 
Miss Cunningham, I am a desperate man. I am about to kill myself, and if something doesn't I happen to save me... I am sorry, sir, but we simply have to have these particulars for our office files, you know. Now then, your name. Miss... Cunningham. Miss Cunningham, there's no time for that. I'm about to throw myself into eternity. Not until I get my particulars. Look here, Miss... Cunningham. I know your name. I'm trying to tell you that I have nothing to go on living for. If you'll forgive my saying so, sir, you really shouldn't end a sentence with a preposition. Hello? Hello? Are you there, sir? Oh, yes, I'm here. Oh, good. Now, your name and your address. Miss, my name is unimportant. Unimportant. What initial? Oh, for God's sake, my name is James. Oh, I see, I am sorry. Wait till I find my rubber. Don't go to any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. There we are now. Your initial? B. B for Bob? No, B for Sam. Well, there's no need to be sarcastic, Mr. James. I'm, I'm sorry, only Miss trying Cunningham, to do my I job. I mean, after all, that's what I'm being paid for. I can understand that, Miss... Cunningham? Miss Cunningham, is it at all possible? Do you think that by any remote chance we could skip the red tape? Well, I maybe, would like just... to, Mr. James, but uh, I'm afraid I must have these particulars for our office, office files. files. <laughs> yes. yes. Perhaps if you could tell me the nature of your case. I'm awfully glad you asked me that, Miss Cunningham. It's very simple, really. I've just been fired from a perfectly good job. My wife left me for another man this morning. I have no oh, job, excuse no me, wife, uh, no money, no home. Could you take it a bit slower, no sir? My shorthand isn't the best. No job. No wife. wife. No money. No money. No home. No home. Is that all? Well, isn't that enough? For the love of God, Miss Cunningham, Cunningham I'm ready to throw myself into eternity. Eternity. I-T-Y. -Y. Yes. I see. And where are you now, Mr. James? Uh, well, right at this moment, I am hanging from the window of my office. I have the phone in one hand and the window sill in the other. And where is the building? Well, uh, it's just a few blocks from yours, as a matter of fact. North or south? West. I saw the sun sinking as I climbed out here and your neon sign lit up. And just and how I... far up is your office? The 15th floor. Oh, that's quite a jump, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. And it's very cold up here. If you don't do something for me soon, I may just drop off. I see. Well, now, just what can I do for you? Well, perhaps you could soothe me, or advise me, or, or... Well, if you're on the 15th floor, my advice to you, Mr. James, is don't jump. That's awfully kind of you, Miss Cunningham. The very soul of Christian charity. Oh, yes, I'm Christian charity. Faith and hope are out to lunch. That's a pretty old gag, Miss Cunningham. Oh, well, we try to send you out with a bit of a giggle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, I have no job, I tell you. No wife, yes, no money, yes, no yes, home, all that, yes, no friends. Yes. No friends? Oh, I must have missed that one. Oh dear, I've broken my pencil. I'm just getting another one if you'll just hang on. I am hanging on. I'm hanging on for grim death. I've been trying to tell you that for the last half hour now, Miss... Cunningham. Miss Cunningham, Miss Cunningham. Well, there's no need to shout, Mr. James. I'm just trying to do my job. I know you're job. trying to... I know, I'm Miss, employed here day after day and people Miss shout Cunningham, at me. I'm sorry. I am very shout, fraught. Shout, shout, shout. That's all they do. 30 years I've been working here. Years. I love my job. 30 years? Yes, 30 years. <laughs> That's a long time, isn't it? You Miss don't know how Cunningham. long, Mr. James. 30 years. Or At my you, age, this... You don't sound that old, Miss Cunningham. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Well, I'm sure you'll feel a lot better about it if you wouldn't you like to talk about it. I don't it? want to talk I... about it. Do you hear? Stop badgering me. I'm you not badgering you. You are. You... And I've broken my pencil again. Miss Cunningham, why not just come right out with it? You'll feel so much better, I can really? assure you. How old are you, Miss Cunningham? My age is unimportant. Unimportant? Totally. Miss Cunningham, you don't understand. I'm trying to help you. Well, you're not. Do you hear me? You're not trying to help me. What does it matter to you if my childhood was scarred with unhappiness? But it does matter Growing to up me. with disenchantment. Growing up with Jilted three times, I feel just ugly, ugly, oh, ugly. And come. old, I can't stand it now, listen, longer. Miss Cunningham. You're becoming hysterical. I'm not. You are. I'm not. You are. You must take a hold of yourself. This thing about your age sounds positively... Freudian. You said it. You said that word. What word? For the last time. Will you stop badgering me? I'm not badgering me. If you don't, I'm I'm going to... To... If you don't Cunningham, leave please. me alone, I'll get out of this window. Don't do anything foolish, All right, Cunningham. damn you. You forced me into it. Miss ah! Cunningham? Hello? Hello? Oh. Oh, hello, Lifeline. I believe you have a position vacant. Maria, Maria, Maria. Leonard, are you coming to bed or ain't ya? In a minute, honey. I've almost got it. Are you still working on that schmaltzy musical comedy, Leonard? 
No, honey, it's not a musical comedy. How many times do I have to tell you? It's a modern opera. So you're going all highbrow, Leonard. Are you coming to bed or ain't you? Maria, Maria, Maria. Maria, Maria. What kind of crummy lyric is that, Leonard? Honey, Stephen has done a good job on this lyric. It has soul. It has feeling. Soul and feeling it might have. Variety it ain't got. Maria, Maria, Maria. It's a bit repetitious, ain't Honey, it? Honey, do you mind? I gotta finish this number tonight. 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 Now there's an idea. Oh, can it, will ya? <sighs> Maria, Maria. Maybe Maria. you could mention a surname. Oh, honey. Once or thrice. Honey, it's a love song. This boy meets this girl called... Don't tell me. Maria? But it's based on Romeo and Juliet. Romeo whom? I don't know his other name. It's by Shakespeare. I knew a Romeo Schwartz once. Maria, Maria. He ran the delicatessen round the corner. Honey, will you go to bed? I gotta finish this song. All right, already. But I don't think it'll sell, Leonard. I mean, Maria, Maria. What are you gonna entitle this opera? Oh, maybe East Side Story or something like that. But, Leonard, nobody writes operas about Brooklyn. No, honey. It's about these juvenile delinquents who have this fight, this rumble. Rumble? How will that sound with the rest of the orchestra? The same as it always does, honey. Maria, Maria, Maria. Leonard, that's 12 Marias you got there. The critics will say you're written out. Couldn't you lose a Maria here or there? Honey, it wouldn't scan. Scansh, man. Why don't you write pretty music like your brother Elmer? Honey, what has Elmer ever written? He's commercial. So he sells, don't he? Honey, why don't you go to bed? Not till you change that crummy lyric. You got your reputation to think of. You don't want another bum show like Candy. Okay, okay, so I'll change it. Good. How about a good old-fashioned name like Miriam? Miriam. Miriam, Miriam, Miriam. No, honey, no. That lyric would die a death in Beirut. All right, it was just a suggestion. Hey, I've got another one. Yeah? Give me your pen. I'll write it in. Stephen ain't gonna like this. Ah, Stephen Schmeven. There. Oh, no, honey. That's been done before. Really? Well, you can always say the other guy stole it. Oh, all right. That'll do. I'm going to bed. Good. I think it's a nice name for a song, Leonard. Yeah, I guess it ain't so bad after all. Aida, 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 Aida. Tonight in Project 69, we present two interviews of our times. A close-up of the seamier side of Sydney's nightlife along the Twinkling Mile. <laughs> Following the uproar caused by the topless dress craze, a King's Cross restaurateur, owner of an all-night cafe called The Stew and Chew, decided to dress one of his waitresses in a topless uniform in the hope that this revealing outfit would boost trade. We decided to interview this daring girl before the Vice Squad did. But before we actually spoke to her, we watched her at work and witnessed the reaction to her stunning uniform as she entered the main dining area. It's true. However, she seemed to handle the customers quite well. And vice versa. Get your hands off that or I'll have the union on to yous. Cappuccino? Sorry, love, Chino's off. Hey, watch where you're ashing that cigarette, mate. Yes, love, what do you want? Oh, I'm from Project 69. Oh, hello. I've been waiting for you lot to come in. My name's Nancy Selson and I'm 20. Uh, I'm 20. I also do Mysterioso dancing, specialising in exotica, and I'd like to send a big cheerio call to Sammy Lee. G'day, Sam. Yes, well, uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions. I've got nothing to hide. Yes, quite. Uh, well, Miss Elson, how long have you been a waitress? I'm a hostess. A hostess? Yes, there's a big difference, you know. No, I didn't. Yes, a waitress just waits. A hostess has to push a little harder. Oh? The food. Oh. 
This week I'm pushing sizzling steak. Good heavens. No, here on the menu. It's this week's special. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed the uh, menu. Oh, here, let me show you. It's right here. Under... Oh, yes, I see. That one marked. Oh. <laughs> I'm Ooh. sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfectly all right. Just don't lean over the table like that. Uh, Miss Selson, are there any advantages in wearing a topless uniform? Oh, yes, many. Before, some of the customers used to take a sly peek down my blouse when I leant over the table. Now they don't have to. Quite. <laughs> uh, surely you would be more aware of temperature changes in this new fashion. My oath. Gets a bit warmish round the rotisserie. And uh, how will you feel when winter comes? Cold. Yes, but I mean, wouldn't a topless dress cause you great discomfort in the cold weather? Oh, yes, but it's not the goose pimples they're here to look at, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, Miss Selson, are you kept any busier? Up and down like a yo-yo. And do any customers annoy you? Sometimes, but if they do, they soon get a swift kick up the blue plate special. Do you think that topless dresses are here to stay? Yes, bosoms are in. Yes, I wouldn't say that. Uh, tell me, do you have any ambitions? My ultimate ambition is to become an ABC presentation announcer. Cheerio, Sir Charles. Have any of the customers complained about your topless dress? Well, some of them have said they've got the feeling they're being stared at. Yes, but do you find the customers staring at you? Funny you should say that. There's one old bloke in a gabardine raincoat and sand shoes used to stand with his nose glued to the window, pretending to have a look at that chook going round and round. What was he looking at? I wouldn't like to say, but he sure fogged up the window. Yes. Miss Selson, what would you do in case of a raid? Oh, I'll whip into the lab and slip on a bolero. Now, one final question. What are you doing when you finish work tonight? Well, I've got nothing on. That's a good point. Thanks. Well, why don't you pop up to my apartment and have a look at my bust of Napoleon? What is this, a competition? Shall we say half past? All right. If I'm late, start without me. Next in our tour of the Twinkling Mile, we visited one of the more popular forms of nightclub entertainment in Sydney, a female impersonation show entitled The Bottom of My Garden. There we spoke to one of the leading impersonators known in the show as Sybil. Sybil, what is your real name? Oh, I can't tell you that. Some of your mates on the milk run might not understand. Uh, but you can call me Les. Then this isn't your full-time job, Les. Oh, no. I just took it on for the extra money. I've got a wife and two kids to support, you know. Oh, <laughs> what a lovely gown you're wearing, Les. Oh, ta. Oh, viewers, what a shame this isn't colour television. I made it myself, you know. Did you really? <laughs> oh, Les, it's enchanting. It's a superb lime green water spot creation with a horseshoe neckline and a gold lame fishtail. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. The wife borrowed it for the black and white ball, you know. Oh, how does your wife feel about your having a job as a female impersonator? Oh, all right. She's the same size as me, you see, and she gets to wear all my clobber when I'm finished with it. But does she have any objection to your unusual profession? Yeah, only one. Her feet are a bit big for me gold wedgies. Uh, do your neighbours mind having a female impersonator living in their midst? No. And the other day, Mrs Beecham next door gave me a lovely Helena Rubenstein home beauty kit. Oh, really? Complete with mascara wand. Yes, of course. For my birthday. And your children, do they have any difficulty accepting their father's strange job? Well, they're a bit young to know the difference yet. But until they reach the right age, I'll let them go on thinking they've got two mothers. What about your own childhood? Oh, much the same as any other kids. I did me scouts, got me Goanna certificate for knots. I grew up just like any other kid who wears the same size as his mother. And do you have any hobbies? I do a bit of fair isle, <laughs> in between numbers. Oh, interesting. Tat a bit. <laughs> How do you get on with your fellow performers? Oh, they're a bunch of hard-working blokes here. We all get on very well together, all work very hard, even those with small parts. In the show. I see. Got to pull together, you know. And what is your opinion of the other female impersonation shows here at the Cross? Don't like them much. Oh. But what is your opinion, for instance, of the jewel box? Yeah, well, it's a bit like the hasty, tasty and drag, really. <laughs> Les, to what do you attribute your graceful feminine form? Peter's ice cream. Oh, you eat a lot of ice cream? No, I shove the cones down the front here. Tell me, do you ever have any trouble with members of the audience? Yeah, sometimes. Used to get one old horse's off on Friday nights, made his presence felt. But two of the blokes here, Daphne and Chiquita, got him out the back one night and gave him a good punch-up. What lies ahead for the female impersonator? Hard to say. It's a pretty dicky profession, you know. Then you think that this kind of show is just a passing fad? On the whole, yes. Then, Les, you have no illusions. 
Oh, no. I'll be out in the acre as soon as my voice breaks. I think I'll conduct a crusade. A what? A crusade. What kind of a crusade did you have in mind, Arthur? I'll bring faith to the people. That'll be nice. I'll turn off the telly then. I'll follow in the footprints of all them other big time evangelists. That sounds real exciting. I've had a sign. This is my calling. In a minute I'm going to get out of this lounge chair and I'll go from door to door and I'll knock up the neighbours and show them the light. You're going out then, are you? In a minute. But this will be just a beginning. I'll inspire the masses with my oratory. Today, Waratah Parade. Tomorrow, the stadium. Who are you versing? Tomorrow, the stadium. The day after, the world. That'll be nice. I'll show them that they are miserable, suffering souls. I'll go amongst them and alleviate their pain. That'll be nice, Arthur. I'll be the most popular evangelist the world has ever known. You'll give the Rev Walker a run for his money. I must await my calling post haste. You want me to pack a bag then, Arthur? Where'd I put me shoes? You've got them on. Ah. Oh. Where's me hat? You've got it on. Don't wait tea for me. You're going then, Arthur. Out to the world to show them that they not what for knowledge and wisdom. Better take your raincoat, Arthur. Ah? Oh. Why? It's teeming down outside. Ah, oh, is it? Set in by the looks of it. Oh. <clears throat> Where'd I put me pipe? In your mouth, Arthur. Maybe I'll write a book. What kind of a book, Arthur? I'll write a book about a crusade. That'll be nice. 